guys. Today I'm going to talk about two of my favorite topics, 3D printing and fly fishing. I had so much to say that I'm making two videos about it. So this video is about me finding real designs on Thingiverse and then making them. And then my second video will be me trying them out and then reviewing them. So I'm super excited about doing this video because it gives me a really good excuse to go out and fly fish. It also gives me a good excuse to learn about the mechanics of how fly fishing reels work. I've been fly fishing since I was about 8 and I've been a fanatic of the sport ever since. So before I start my review I'd just like to say kudos to the people that designed these reels and put them out on Thingiverse. I really like the fact that you took the effort and time to create something really interesting and yeah I've been pretty impressed so far. So for any viewers that like to take a crack at building any of these reels or checking out any of the other designs that these guys have put out, I'll put a link to their profiles in the description. So for those of you that have never heard about Thingiverse, it's basically an online community where people share 3D CAD models with each other with the intention of people then taking them and 3D printing them. So I was not looking forward to spooling five reels by hand because number one, it's time consuming. Number two, it's likely if not guaranteed that your line will get tangled. Number three, it's difficult to wind the line evenly onto a reel by hand. If you're a fly fisherman, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So to make that whole process a lot easier, I designed this product to help spool line onto a reel. Later, I'll upload a short video explaining it in more detail. I thought it would be interesting and make this review even more informative if I added a breakdown of how much each reel cost to make. So Prusa, the 3D printing company, have a blog where they share helpful information, articles, how-to guides, etc. On their blog, I found a 3D printing price calculator that I'm gonna use to help me figure out how much each reel costs me to print. It works out electricity, printing costs, printer maintenance costs, etc. It's really useful and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? The first reel design is by Michael Hackney, which is apparently the first completely 3D printed fly fishing reel. He started designing the first prototype in 2012, which is on display at the American Museum of Fly Fishing in Manchester, Vermont. It is designed for a full weight fly fishing line. I like the fact that this design only requires super glue and a zip tie in addition to the 3D printed parts. So I'm not sure how long the reel handle will last since it's held in place by super gluing the square end of the handle into a square hole. But at the same time I can totally understand the design choice since the whole goal was to design a 3D printed fly fishing reel that doesn't really need any fasteners. When you sum up the cost of printing a bag of 200 zip ties and the cheapest super glue from Home Depot, the reel ended up costing me $11.42 to make. But if we only add the cost of printing, one zip tie and a few blobs of super glue, the cost to manufacture one reel is $2.48. The second reel was by Steve Thon and was designed to handle 3 to 4 weight fly line. It requires quite a few additional parts. One bolt, one lock nut, three washers, smaller bolt for the handle, and an optional ball bearing and spring. I did not use these because I somehow managed to order the wrong ball bearing size. The lock nut had to be embedded into the printed thumb nut part, which meant pausing the print and inserting the lock nut mid-print. This was the first time I had ever tried doing something like this. I didn't really know what I was doing and did some dodgy stuff mid-print. Don't do what I just did. 
Later I learned about Prusa Slicer's color print feature, which allows you to add pauses in the print for specific layers, which allows you to insert parts at the right level without having to do the dodgy stuff I did, or having any print crashes. So yeah, do that instead. Later I'll make a short video explaining how to use Prusa Slicer's color print feature. Overall the assembly was pretty easy to understand. for the reel and how much the printing costs, this reel cost me $36.57 to make. But if we pretend that I only purchased the exact amount of fasteners and glue that I needed for one reel, the cost to manufacture this reel comes to $6.28. Reel 3 is designed by a person with a username Giuliano86 and was based on fly reels that they owned. So Giuliano doesn't specify the line weight that this reel can hold, but if I was to guess I'd say it's about a 3 to 4 weight. It only requires a few additional parts. Super glue, 2 M3 by 10 mm machine screws, 2 M3 nuts, and 1 zip tie. Giuliano mentions that the 3D printed clicker that they designed ends up breaking with extended use and recommends using a zip tie instead. I awkwardly needed to cut away a few millimeters lengthwise off the zip tie, otherwise it didn't want to fit. I wish that the school parts weren't in so many different pieces that needed to get glued together. It makes me question the reel's structural integrity. I like the large diameter of the entire reel and the fact that the reel's aesthetic is very close to that of reels on the market my bright red filament withstanding. The cost of the fasteners, printing the parts, and the cheapest superglue comes to a total of $14.38. But the cost to manufacture one reel comes to $5.44. Reel 4 looks hella impressive, with no additional fasteners needed other than superglue. Designed by Ed Zonnefeld, it was inspired by the Luna AC2 and Loop hubless fly reels. This assembly wasn't too complicated, despite the number of parts. I did need to sand down some parts that needed to click or slide into each other, due to the fact that parts don't always print exactly the size you made them, because the printing material often warps slightly. Assembling, I noticed that the drag hub is very difficult to adjust without using a pair of pliers, even after I sanded it down and lubricated it, which is not ideal for when you need to adjust it while out fishing. For those of you who aren't familiar with the fishing term drag, drag is the resistance that a reel gives when the line is being pulled out of the reel. It gives two options for the drag system in the reel. The first is the use of a clicker which gives good drag resistance, but makes the reeling action a bit more difficult and less smooth. The second option, which I ended up choosing, is the spring pull system, which gives a smoother reeling experience. The cost of printing the parts and the cheapest superglue from Home Depot comes to a total of $7.84. But the printing costs and a few blobs of super glue comes to $5.41. Reel number 5 is designed by Eric Upman and was made to handle 5 weight fly line. The overall design looks very sturdy, however it does require quite a few additional components. The additional components required are 1 M3 by 5 machine screw. 3 M3 by 6 machine screws, 6 M3 by 10 machine screws, 
one M3 by 20 machine screw, one M5 by 30 socket screw, one M5 lock nut, two bearings, and super glue. The real pole needed to be printed using TU filament, which is a flexible, rubbery type of 3D printing material. TU is a very difficult material to print with and you need to know what you are doing before you try to print with it. So one time I tried printing with TU and it got wrapped around my idler box's gears. I ended up having to slightly disassemble my Prusa opening up the idler box in order to remove the filament. The pull didn't print perfectly but it was good enough to use for the reel. The assembly of this reel was quite a lot more complicated than the others because of all the different parts. I had to sand the hole in the reel base because the bolt I purchased didn't want to go through, but this wasn't too difficult to do. The assembly instructions were a bit vague at times, so I ended up assembling it the way I thought made the most sense. There were several options for the spacers. And I wish that he had mentioned which one he used. At first the bolt wasn't threading through the lock nut far enough to reach the lock nut's plasticky section, so the railing action kept loosening the nut. the lock nut over so that the plastic part would make contact with the bolt solved this problem. I'm not a fan of the super glued covers at each end because it prevents you from being able to open the spool later. So adding up what I spent on buying parts for the reel and printing costs, this reel cost me $13.81 to make. But if we add cost per fasteners and bearings used, along with the exact amount of glue that I needed, the cost to manufacture this reel comes to $10.45. So that was part one. Hopefully part two will be out by next week. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Bye!